I've just created a workflow that transforms AI-generated plastic-looking skin into realistic texture skin during upscaling. Let's see how it improves skin appearance. This image came from Wang 2.2. I showed this workflow before in another video. While the sweater and the wood backgrounds have good texture, her skin appears too smooth without realistic detail. Now let's compare this original image with the version enhanced by my workflow. Let me show you another example. In this demo, the woman's face was initially hard to see because of strong backlight from the sun. I used flux context to reduce that backlight, making her face clearer. But now, her skin looks quite rough. You can see grid-like artifacts, unnatural horizontal and vertical lines. Next, we'll see how this workflow cleans up and enhances her skin texture. This starting image is very low resolution, only 349 by 349 pixels. After upscaling with the workflow, it became a much larger 3456 by 3456 image. As you see, this workflow handles many tricky situations well. Now I'll explain how it works. Quick note, the top bar in my configure might look different than yours because I'm demonstrating on a cloud platform called Running Hub. If you are curious about that platform, there's a link below this video. The workflow really has two main stages. The top two groups handle the first stage of upscaling. They use a technology called Supir, which I covered in detail in a previous video. I explained almost every parameter there, so if you want to get the best results from Supir, definitely check the link to that video below. The lower three groups manage the second stage of upscaling. This part uses a new fine-tuned flux model called SRPO. SRPO is fantastic at generating realistic skin texture. I've compared it to another flux model, Flux Career, which creates for the realistic and aesthetically pleasing images. I posted those comparison images on Reddit. The link is in the video description. We start an uploaded image at 1024 by 1024 pixels. In the first group, it gets upscaled by two times. If your original image is much smaller, you should definitely increase this upscaling ratio. If you only upscale twice with a very small source image, Supir can't generate enough detail and might leave artifacts. The skin stays too smooth. That's where this skin deep detail node comes in. It adds some essential texture as a starting point. This next node helps fix certain artifacts. I bypassed it for this image because it wasn't needed. The original details came from the 1.2.2 low noise model, so the facial structure and the details were solid. However, if your image was processed with other models, you might need this node active. Models like Queen Edit, Flux Context, or even Nano Banana can sometimes damage details or create artifacts during editing. This node can help fix that kind of damage. The add green node adds a subtle film green effect to the input image. If the superior output still lacks skin detail, try activating this node. For me, it wasn't necessary this time because superior already provided enough skin detail. This level of detail is sufficient. The default setting for DPM++ ADA is 1. I increased it to 5 because at 1, the output image looked overly sharp. The wrinkles on her forehead appeared too deep and unnatural. If your input image lacks skin detail, you could also try increasing the CFG or S noise values. And if you encounter artifacts, try using Restore EDM Sampler instead of DPM++. For the Supir model, I recommend version F. Version Q can sometimes generate artifacts itself. Well, version Q creates more detail, those artifacts can cause bigger problems in the second upscaling stage. Since we have another stage coming up, we don't need extreme detail right here. For the SDXL model in this stage, I recommend the XI Lightning version of Juggernaut XL. It handles skin details more effectively than other Lightning models. Now let's move to the second stage upscaling. Here the image gets upscaled again, this time by another two times. The size becomes 4096 by 4096. Naturally, if you need an even larger image, you can increase this upscaling ratio. 
I also split the image into four tiles before this upscaling to save VRAM. I set it for two rows and two columns, making each tile 1024 by 1024 pixels. Try to adjust the rows and the columns so each tile is close to 1024 by 1024. Many upscaler models are trained on images of that exact size. The output from this group already looks good, but if we process it through the final group, we can even get better skin texture. This last group also splits the image into tiles for upscaling. You can generally leave all these parameters at their default settings. The main one you might want to adjust is the denoising strength in the case sampler. If you want more pronounced texture, just increase that value. Advanced users could also experiment with different samplers or schedulers to enhance details further. Alright, I hope this workflow helps you create more realistic AI images. If you want to support me in making more useful tools, consider joining our community. If you enjoyed this video, subscribing to the channel is always appreciated. See you in the next one.